All right, so um, uh, something we gotta address, uh, and it is the uh, Good Friday date. All right. Um, it seems that uh, some of our uh, there are a couple of groups that are scheduled for Friday for that Good Friday, and this is the uh, last lab, so you won't be able to perform that. So in this case, I'm going to we're going to have to solve it somehow, and probably what's going to happen, I'm just going to join Mr. Habinski's class, and uh, uh, I'll pick you one by one to perform that lab. This is a fully supervised lab. Everybody gets a few minutes to spend with the fusion splicer. Uh, under full supervision because it's the uh, optical fiber so that some safety is involved all right uh, and then there's another lab which is the coaxial cable uh, termination which should take you uh, no more than five minutes each so we're going to be able to solve it that way all right uh, uh, so uh, that's uh, that's as far as uh, that okay uh, looks like we're in a good shape um, if uh, for some reason you feel that you're in trouble with this course, uh, just let me know. So we still have some time to uh, iron some wrinkles uh, when it comes to file submissions and things like that. If you need some help, let me know. I'll help you with that. All right. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we have a lecture brewing here already. Okay. This is a repeat from yesterday. Um, and you have that uh, uh, you have that file of already available for download uh, under the lecture notes. Okay. Um, one thing I'm going to mention is that uh, I was playing with the background uh, uh, because for some reason Zoom doesn't like um, uh, with this setup that I have. Zoom doesn't like the white background too much and when that happens uh, uh, we're getting some uh, frozen pictures on that so I was trying to break it up uh, with some other colors so that's why sometimes uh, you know in this particular one might seem like a little bit uh, off as far as the background okay but the information is there so instead of having white background here you got a blue background wow all right <laughs> okay um, all right, so today we're going to address the um, installation concepts. Um, well, uh, after what I sh well with this whole course that I show you, you're getting a pretty good basis uh, uh, based on which you can uh, uh, you can pretty much apply for uh, for entry level uh, job when it comes to telecommunications as far as the infrastructure. Uh, installations or infrastructure systems so that uh, I know this course is called network cabling but uh, the network cabling doesn't involve just uh, pulling the wires uh, um, it, uh, it involves installing systems setting them up um, basically the whole setup uh, as far as like for example you have a store to set up with all the networks so yes of course you have to uh, install the wiring uh, and you have to lay them properly in the walls in the ceiling and uh, and whatnot but also you're going to have to deal with things like uh, setting up the modems, setting up the particular equipment that uh, whether it be a nurse call system or a security alarm or a fire, well, fire alarm, maybe not because uh, I'm just giving you a little bit of information on fire alarm. But when it comes to installations and uh, servicing fire alarms, there is some additional licensing involved. And as I said before, you can uh, you can talk to me if there's something if, 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 if this is um something that you think might be of your interest uh, just let me know i will point you in the right direction of uh, which courses to sign up our college does offer the uh, fire um, uh, fire technician i think it's a fire technician program uh, and also other colleges as well but uh, for sure our college does offer that so uh, if you're interested in that uh, let me know and i'll point you in the i'll i will direct you uh, uh, towards the appropriate routes uh, when it comes to pursuing that type of a career. All right. Everything else, uh, such as uh, network systems, uh, which would be installing, mostly would be LAN, uh, local area networks. There's a lot of jobs out there. Every single little and huge building, uh, uh, you can't even imagine that existing without uh, uh, fully functioning, without plumbing, without uh, uh, electrical 
uh, with like the electrical systems and right now without the network system. So there are jobs uh, available, a lot of jobs, uh, uh, pretty much anywhere you go. Um, there are th new things being installed. There are things being uh, teared down. There are service calls, uh, there are changes. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, this thing never stops. Right? So there's a lot of work to be done uh, constantly and continuously. All right, so uh, uh, this is, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not going, this, this course is not going to give you a whole full, it's, I'm not going to make you a full technician as far as, uh, okay, here's a, here's a system to be installed, go do it, all right? Um, but this will give you a lot, a lot of bases based on which you can apply for the for entry level job, uh, and uh, when you're going to be explained some system how it works and how things need need to be installed, you're not completely green. You will know what they're talking about when they're explaining things to do to you. They means uh, whether it's supervisor or client uh, when it comes to installation of those systems. And when you get a job, of course, you're not going to be sent alone for the first time and uh, expect uh, nobody's going to expect you to deal fully with the, all the aspects of that. But you will be uh, sent as a part of the team and uh, you, will, uh, uh, you will basically use this knowledge and information that I'm giving you here. Uh, and you can build on that uh, and you can get uh, as much practical experience as possible and then um, that is going to be so much easier for you to get into it, all right? So um, uh, today we're going to talk about the, I call this topic installation concepts. Um, and this has to do with uh, some of it mounting simple devices, but um, uh, for the most part, uh, we're going to be dealing with installing or running the cables uh, through the structures or the building structures. All right, so over here, what we have is a basic idea of a wall structure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a couple of examples here. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we're still, rec we're, yeah, we are recording. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is a typical, uh, one of the scenarios that you might encounter. And uh, this has to do with uh, installing maybe security alarm devices uh, and uh, any other devices such as thermostat or keypad or, uh, or a, a jack, like a wall jack uh, for telephone or ethernet. It involves uh, installation of the wiring, okay? And what are we going to, uh, what can we expect when we get out there and start pulling the so-called pulling the wires or inst cable installations, all right? So one of the, uh, this is a timber type of a framing. Now uh, we can uh, we distinguish basically two types of framing. Uh, one is a timber and the other one is steel studs, okay, or steel framing. Um, steel framing is a lot easier to install wires in. Uh, well, for some, uh, in, in some aspects, and in some aspects, timber uh, is more friendly. Uh, there are pros and cons uh, to both. All right. So here's a timber um, timber framing, and what do we have here? We have a saw plate on the. I'm just giving you the terminology um uh, that uh, that you'll be dealing with uh, when in, when installing and when you just come to a wall that is covered with a drywall uh, just so you know what possibly could be behind that drywall so uh, so you don't get yourself tied into a knot when when, when pulling a wire when when, uh, when installing wires or cables all right so uh here we have a salt plate on the bottom and uh, uh underneath the salt plate there could be um well nothing uh, or uh, nothing, as, uh, as far as uh, nothing for you to get into and, and, and help you with the wire installation. Or there could be a basement. Uh, the best thing would be if there's a basement with a drop ceiling, so you can pop the tiles and, uh, and re you can route the wiring through that. Um, uh, or you can, so you can run the wire through the basement if there is one, or you can run the wires through the uh, top floor uh, if there's a drop ceiling, it's also a, a good idea to have. Or if there's an attic space, right? So if there's a, if there's another floor on top of that, uh, then and if there is drywall ceiling, then uh, you don't have much options. Uh, but uh, if if you really need to run some wires there, you're going to have to disturb some of those walls, and you know. Um, 
usually when it comes to commercial installations you're going to have a drop ceiling here drop ceiling which means there's the, the, there's a wired structure holding uh, wired frame holding the ceiling tiles which you can pop with your uh, uh, with your hands and uh, and you have all that ceiling space you can uh, you can run the wires through all right um, usually in the commercial installations in residential well um, different story all right uh, when I was working in the field, I uh, was trying, when, when it comes to uh, running or installing wiring in the, uh, in the residential setting, uh, when everything is nice and neat, all drywalled in, uh, there's not much options. Uh, you either mount wireless devices, if you can, or, uh, or you disturb the structure as far as drywall. And then, you know, depends. You're going to have to patch it up, or maybe there's some other crews that... Uh, uh, it depending on the it depends on the situation where it's a renovation, or uh, or you can just ask the client when is the next time you're going to do some painting. Maybe call me then, right? Because I'm going to disturb some walls and they're going to have to pat, be patched. All right. But uh, um, for the most part, when it comes to commercial, which would be probably the core um, um, uh, of the business, uh, usually in the commercial setting, you do have drop ceiling. And uh, quite often you can run also wires through the basement, uh, which also would have a drop ceiling um, on the floor below. All right, so you can run the wires from the bottom and you can run the wires from the top. When it comes to installing, a, um, uh, let's say, for example, a Ethernet jack, like a wall jack, uh, in this space, so it will be about a foot of the ground, um, or sometimes it's on a desktop uh, height, um, then... Um, you can run it through, through the bottom, right? Now, um, so if it's here, no problem. Just drill your hole through the bottom and install the jack. If you run it through the top, then uh, you may run into something that's called the horizontal studs. Uh, sometimes they're called the uh, interior wall nailer right here, or sometimes they're called nodgings, uh, depending on the construction, okay? But for the most part, uh, for the uh, uh, um, uh, just for the easiness of, of, of conversation, quite often they are called uh, people refer to them as horizontal studs. Okay, uh, so these will be the regular studs here, and there will be a header plate, header, header, and there will be some um, there will be some other uh, construction timber um, timber uh, timber elements here. Um, so if, for example, let's say this is a window and you need to install something that's called a door contact because, you know, you don't, we don't have window contacts. The device is called a door contact uh, for the simplicity of the terminology. So the door contacts are being mounted in the windows and the door contacts may be mounted in the door, right? And the door contacts are pretty much passive devices and they're called the read they, they implement read switches read r e e d and read um, because it looks like the read in like for example saxophone mouthpiece or a clarinet mouthpiece all right it's just two two pieces of uh, two of something and then, uh, and then they're bound together and uh, the mouthpiece you blow the air onto it and it causes it to vibrate so it looks like that all right so it's called read switch it's a passive device, uh, basically it opens or closes based on the proximity of the magnet. You bring a magnet close to that, the switch closes. You take magnet away from that, the switch opens, right? So it's a passive switch. Uh, and it uh, basically involves two wires uh, to, be, uh, to be connected to it, all right? So um, let's say uh, you have a door contact that you're going to install in the windows, and there are those miniature door contacts. So I encourage you to Google that, uh, a miniature door contact. They come uh, in sort of like a uh, rectangular cubical type of uh, shape. And, um, um, and they, sometimes they have wires. They will be having, uh, there will be a miniature door contact that would look like this. There would be a switch inside there, but you don't see it. And sometimes you're going to get wires coming out of this side. Sometimes you're going to get the wires coming out of that side. And sometimes you're going to get wires coming out of the middle. So uh, it depends on what, uh, what you order. And of course, there's another piece that, uh, that uh, would be the magnet. All right. So of course, this uh, switch 
would be mounted on the door on the on the frame it would be mounted on the frame okay and this magnet would be mounted on the door itself all right so when the door opens the magnet the magnet is being pulled away from that switch and the switch opens when the magnet is being pulled close to it the switch closes so that's how the security that's how the security system uh, uh, you know, the, the, that's how they work all right uh, so you would probably install those window contacts or door contacts in the windows and those miniature ones you can actually in the modern windows that we have now uh, you can hide them inside the frame right uh, so you maybe depending on how the window opens you would put it in the corner here or in the corner here or maybe uh, on the top uh, wherever it's uh, wherever it's convenient and when you hide them when you close the window and even if you have it open you don't even see them um, uh, so the wire would be run through the bottom or through the top but over here a good idea would be to run it through the bottom or if you run it through the top run it through here and drill holes here so needless to say the best way to install wired contacts would be before the drywall gets put on so um, the installations in the residential and commercial settings, but for the most part for the residential, they will be the most difficult ones. Uh, the, uh, the best installations are uh, when, you, when there's a construction from so-called from scratch. Okay, so, so basically it's a new construction, there are trades coming in and, uh, and they're installing their own uh, whatever, they, uh, whatever they do. Uh, the window of opportunity for us to run our wiring in this type of a setting is um, before the drywall gets put on, obviously, right? Because you have all the freedom of drilling holes through the studs um, and, uh, and running the wires and making the installation nice and proper, okay? Um, so uh, the, the window of opportunity is just before the drywall gets put on and also what many people don't consider but now you will know after the air ducts are being run and installed okay why is it after the air ducts well the thing is that when you when you install your wiring and then first and then the air duct people come in they will run their air ducts through the construction of the building and there's a chance, a huge chance, that they're going to disturb your wiring. And then the drywalls, drywallers come in, they put the drywall on, and then when it comes to the final installation, you know, putting on head end and connecting wires when, whenever the site is ready for you to do that, then you're going to find out that maybe there are some wires that are broken inside the walls, and then they're in trouble. So, uh, so the best way, best window of opportunity, whenever you are uh, quoting a job or, or, or planning to do a job, is before the drywall puts on, it gets put on, and after the air duct, uh, air ducts are installed and the air duct people are gone. <laughs> right? uh, so, um, so this would be the, uh, uh, you know, another one would be uh, installing a door contact on the door. And I have a little picture right here. So this is, uh, this is a picture picture of, you know, like a drawn picture. And this is a picture of like a photo, all right? So this is, what, this, is, this is how things look in reality, all right? So the door contact would, would be put maybe right here. And here's an example of a door contact, and it's a flash type of a contact. We have two types, basically, for door contacts. Uh, we have them uh, in flash configuration, and we have them in a surface mount configuration. What is a flash? All right, is this one that writes, or is this one that writes? That's the one that writes. Okay, so let me just switch a little bit, switch the screens, and I'm going to explain to you the difference between the surface mount devices and flash devices, flash mounted devices. Um, just take a look in our class, uh, the door that you walk in through every day. Uh, see the door contact on the door with the flash or surface mount. You'll be able to tell. So let's say here is a um, here's the frame. Okay. And here is the door. Okay. There's a little gap between the two right so here's the frame that's the frame that's the door right. now 
when you install the door contact that sticks out just like that and then there's a magnet on top of the door that you can actually see all right that would be a surface mount contact from the side if you if you draw it from the side if this is the door and if this is the frame you would see the door contact like that and the magnet like this all right so this would be like that now if you wanted to install if you can the best way to install would be a drill a hole here drill an opening right and then maybe the wire uh, uh, so basically you drill a hole all the way through okay and then you stick in you mount the the door contact that looks like this oops that's the wrong camera that looks like this right here okay so this part would be flashed with the frame of the door and this part of the magnet would be flashed with the surface of the door so you would just put the you would uh, you would mount or insert that contact until it becomes flash with the surface here so there's a door contact here and then you would stick in the magnet that is also a flash with the frame you would drill a hole and just hammer it in slightly or you can just squeeze that in all right so there's a difference between surface mount and flash mount devices so when you uh, whenever you're installing that the best way would be installing the uh, flash mount because uh, you know it just uh, those things are not uh, seen so aesthetically are the this is this would be the best type of installation all right uh, so so uh, there are different types and whenever you get the contact you have to specify the uh, diameter of the hole that you're going to drill All right now um, just a little type of a, uh, advice a trick of the trade those frames here they are made out of soft wood when you get uh, the, the right diameter of the drill bit so it's slightly you know the hole has to be tight enough for this uh, for this thing to be put in, and so it stays there. See, it's got a little bit perforated edges edges, so it uh, so it can be squeezed into that opening. All right, and there's wires that can go through the top or through the side because you can mount it on the side as well here, top or the side, whichever is um, you know sometimes possible or more possible or more convenient right it makes no difference as long as the door opens takes the it takes the magnet away from the switch now uh trick of the trade here when you choose the and of course it's best to uh um if you don't know if you if you have a package that the the, the size of the hole of the opening is not specified then you basically do a little bit of experimenting and you're not going to experiment on the real thing right get a piece of wood that's just a just scrap piece of wood and drill the hole that you think that should be the right diameter and then see how this thing fits right? and that will be this the hole of the the diameter of the hole that you're going to uh the diameter of the drill bit that you're going to use now here's the thing these frames are usually made of, out of soft wood so whenever you get a drill bit that's just a regular drill bit or a spade bit sometimes what's a spade bit a spade bit it looks like this there's a little bit of a pointy edge here and then there are those um, knives here all right so this will be the size of the hull okay so that would be the spade bit and regular drill bit would be just uh you know a drill bit both can be used all right now because of the frame that is made out of soft wood if you start drilling it you are going to rip the fibers of the wood and they're going to go sideways on you and you're going to create an ugly ugly scar on the frame so the trick of the trade is to drill the hole in reverse because if you drill the hole normally with the forward motion of the drill bit the knife is is the, the, the knife part of this drill bit is shaped so it grabs the uh, it grabs the material and it cuts through it Okay. 
it's going to grab it too much and it's going to rip a scar in the in the in the in the wooden frame but if you put it in the reverse you are using the knife in reverse so you don't get the sharp edge ripping the wood but because of the frame is made of soft wood it is going to be relatively easy for you to start drilling the hole into that frame and you're going to make a nice clean opening without without ripping the, um, the, the the fibers of the of the of the wooden frame right? so drill it backwards and you're going to make a nice clean hole um, well, you need to make a nice clean opening when, uh, when, especially when you're in residential, as well as commercial, because you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, just because you're installing things, you don't want to disturb the whole structure and aesthetics is uh, is important. So uh, there you go. I just saved you some time and money right now and a lot of aggravations, but by uh, um, by showing you <laughs> this type of a trick right now. Okay, uh, so uh, you would drill through here now. This, this head plate right here, right? this header, right? this is not just a one sheet of uh, one, uh, one, one, one board. There are boards stuck, stuck with each other and they're solid all the way through. Right? So, uh, uh, so you, sometimes you're going to have to get a longer drill bit uh, in order to, um, uh, to drill a proper hole because you're not only drilling uh, for, the, for the contact to be mounted, you're also drilling for the wires to be pulled through because the contacts do have the wires. Okay. So uh, here is the, uh, uh, here's a bit of advice when it, when it comes to dealing with the timber framing. Okay. And uh, I might ask you some questions on the test as far as the terminology here, because I got to ask you some questions, right? <laughs> now, here is um, another example of, here's another example of the uh, of, of framing, uh, construction framing. Now, I have, uh, I have put here uh, timber framing, the steel frame, the steel studs, are going to be not much different, except usually, well, pretty much almost, the difference, the, the, usually the difference is between as far as something that affects us, because if we run the, if you have to mount the jack right here, no problem, you just drill from the bottom, if you can, but if you can't get from the bottom, because there could be no basement underneath, it just could be a, just a foundation or with no access at all, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you could use the attic space, or maybe uh, if you can, you're going to use the drop ceiling, the ceiling space, to get to the top of this frame, and you're going to drill a hole for the wire here. Okay. Well, the problem is that there could be all kinds of stuff inside the drywall if the drywall is already put on, right? And then uh, you're going to have to come through this something or uh, nodding okay or horizontal stud and uh, you're going to have to run the wire through it in order to get to this place that you want otherwise if you don't you're going to try to uh, maybe uh, uh, put in a glass rod um, so you could get it through the bottom but then you're going to hit this right here and you won't be able to run, the, and it could be very frustrating. So sometimes what we use is something that's called uh, flexible bits or flex bits, which we'll talk about in the next slide or, or two. Uh, so you can drill a hole through that, right? So you either drill a hole through here, from the bottom, through the opening, or if you can, drill from the top. But you have to make sure that uh, you don't come through the wall, because uh, if you position the drill bit in the wrong way, uh, which means right on the edge, right in the corner where the drywall meets the uh, meets the uh, meets the timber, uh, the drill bit is going to take the least path of resistance, and it's going you're going to come through the drywall, and you're going to make an ugly hole that uh, nobody's going to like, right? And then uh, it's going to be your fault, <laughs> all right? Uh, so <clears throat> um, the basic usual difference it, you know everything i'm saying is uh, i'm going to use that my favorite word usually because uh, what is really happening you're just going to take it case by case right? uh, so 
Sometimes you're going to have a free space, but not very often that you won't have horizontal studs. But, um, well, but, no, but, uh, usually you're going to you're going to encounter those horizontal studs or nodgings. Okay? And the timber frame. When it comes to steel framing, usually, remember I say usually, you are going to have a full opening from the top to bottom. That's usually what I, <laughs> usually is the word of today. Right? Uh, so you can just drill an opening here if it's a steel, st steel framing. And you can, uh, you can cut out an opening for the jack. It will be a rectangular uh, opening um, that will accommodate the size of the insert of the grommet of the mounting piece for the jack. Right? Now, when it comes to data wiring, um, quite often it is best to not use the back boxes unless it is requested and no ifs, ends, and buts by whoever requests that. But the best way would be to have no back boxes for that. And the reason for that is that if you install back boxes, um, and then if you have more than one wire there, you're going to um, you're going to bend those wires too much sometimes. And the wires, data wires, they like to be comfortable. They don't like too much bending radius uh, because uh, you're going to compromise the physical structure of the wire and, uh, and you can say goodbye for, to, to the specifications, especially with the coax cable. Uh, coax cable is more rigid than the data wire, you know? but then again, CAT 6A is more rigid than CAT 5E. Um, so, uh, so when it comes to bending radius, you need to have nice and gradual. Uh, the, the wires have to be able to breathe, as I said, quote unquote, right? They have to have uh, a lot of comfort. So just an opening and the grommet is the best uh, when it comes to data wiring, okay? Um, so, uh, uh, so if there is no horizontal stud, you can cut out the opening here, drill a hole here, and what you can do is sometimes uh, you're going to see those uh, those chains. I don't know what they're called, but uh, but they uh, they look like uh, they look like this, right? If you magnify them, okay, they just look like that. And uh, you can just drop them. You, know? you can just drop that right through the top, and it's going to go all the way to the bottom. And sometimes you can just pull it out with your hand. Or, uh, or if, uh, if you have trouble with that, you can use a little bit of a hook that you can make out of a spare wire. Or quite often, um, what people use is they use the telescopic magnet. Uh, there will be magnet on a magnet on a stick. Right? It's a telescopic thing. And uh, it was, as soon as you put that in the opening, the metal chain just snaps onto the magnet. You pull it out. And then, uh, then you, can, uh, you can tie the wire through the top or you can pull a string through that, all the way through, you tie the wire to the string, pull the string with the wire, boom, you got the wire through, right? Uh, so that's when it comes to uh, uh, steel framing. When it comes to timber, you're going to have to drill extra hole right here. And it could be somewhat tricky to actually run the wire through that, okay? especially when you're dealing with the insulation that's inside the wall. Right? Because sometimes, or quite often, especially if you're dealing with the exterior wall, um, you're going to have to deal with the insulation. So not only you have the horizontal studs you know, to deal with, then you're going to have to deal with the insulation that's packed in there, so you can't just drop a chain in there from the top if you're running the wire. Because the chain is not going to... Uh, just come down with the gravity because the insulation is going to stop it. So you're going to have to push something that's called the glass rods and you can cascade them. Uh, so there are rods that you can screw one to the other and just keep going to make it longer, make it longer and you just can push it in. Um, but if you drill a hole here, you're going to have to poke a few times, sometimes you know, longer than others, actually when you, so, so you can actually get into that hole and push it through. Okay? Uh, not very often, but sometimes you're going to have a little space if you are, but you have to be extremely lucky uh, to have some sort of a space between this 
horizontal stud and the wall that's behind it. Okay? So sometimes it's possible. But usually you're going to have to drill a hole here and poke through. So you're going to have to deal with the with the timber stud here or the uh, the plate here, the horizontal stud or the nodding, and then you can go right into you know this also would be packed with insulation. And not only that, you're also gonna to have to deal with something that's called a vapor barrier. Right? And the vapor barrier is no problem to disturb it, but the thing is that we are not supposed to disturb it, or we're supposed to not disturb it. And if we disturb it, we're supposed to seal it back. Okay? Um, so, um, so this would be the exterior walls. Most of the interior walls that uh, separate one room from the other inside the building, uh, <clears throat> so there's no outside on either side of that wall, um, quite often you're not going to have insulation there. In some cases, you're going to find it if, uh, if uh, people really want to have like extra soundproofing. Um, so <clears throat> this is another example of a typical of a typical uh, uh, framing that we have to deal with. And I chose this picture because on one side we have an interior wall. And over here, there could be exterior wall or not exterior, maybe it could be a firewall or a center block wall. And so here it would be, you would have two by four studs. So in between here, you have a hollow space that you can run your wires. But look at what happens on the other side. The drywall is stuck right onto the center blocks. There is no space uh, to run your wires. Maybe there is. If you can get on top of the on top of the wall so you can get the openings of the center blocks and the center blocks have openings um, and those sometimes are aligned so you can drop a chain and wiggle that in and you can go right to the bottom sometimes you will not be able to get to the bottom because uh, you're going to find that one two three four maybe some some of that they're going to be filled with concrete so you're going to find oh yeah no problem center block we can drop it right to the bottom Sometimes those, those bottom center blocks are filled with concrete and uh, that could be very frustrating for us. All right? So uh, whenever you are, uh, before you cut out or disturb the wall for the jack, make sure you can actually get to the bottom of it. Okay? Um, otherwise, uh, you would just have to run a surface mount, surface mounted raceway, uh, wire molding uh, or, or any kind of raceway that uh, just go with the electrical section um, in any of the hardware stores, uh, like Home Depot, Rona, Lowe's, or Home Hardware, and whatnot. See what they have for surface mount raceways. So just you know, just take a stroll and uh, just go look at it, touch it. You know, imagine how you'll be able to use that. All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, so sometimes you just have to run it surface mount. Okay? Um, now over here you can see the joists on the top. Whoa. I... Where are we here? All right. You will be able you see the joists on the top here and joists on the bottom. Uh, it's always a good idea to know, if you can, which way the joists run. Uh, if they run this way, so it's from here away from you, so you can run the wire from here. To there inside those you know inside this uh, ceiling space above the drywall uh, but if you have to run a wire from here to here then uh, it's not going to be so easy if the ceiling is already installed and drywalled all right so that's why in the commercial business in commercial uh, um, setting most of the time you're going to have a ceiling space that uh, on the bottom of the ceiling space you're going to have the drop ceiling the ceiling tiles that you can just pop and you can run your wires uh, inside the ceiling space right uh, and of course this would be uh, uh, on in the basement uh, sometimes and quite often i uh, when i talk to people um, when they're building houses and uh, whatnot i as much as i can i try to encourage them to install drop ceiling uh, in the basements and people say, yeah, but drywall, it looks nicer. Yes, drywall looks nicer. 
But what if, uh, you know, two years from now, some sort of other device comes up that you're going to have to, you want to install maybe some other things, run a wire from here to there, because you don't know what you're going to need a couple of years from now. And if you drywall yourself out of it, uh, then you're going to just maybe make it impossible for you for you to, to have that without uh, without disturbing the aesthetics of the house. Now, the, the drop ceiling tiles, uh, right now they're nice decorative ceiling tiles and some of them look really nice but for the most part they are so convenient for the you know for the times that we live in we live in the communications era there's always some new wire uh, either to your entertainment center your tv or a security alarm or whatever now uh, or maybe if you have to get in some you know at some plumbing uh, or something just uh, it is always a good idea to have drop sitting in the you know but i said enough times <laughs> in in the basement okay uh so uh, so that now i'm going to show you the flexible bit flexible bit looks like this okay. there's a drill bit piece mounted on a rod and the rod is metal and it's flexible you can hold that with your hand you don't have to have the guide but the guide is very useful because what happens if you just have the opening here and you shove that drill bit right in there so it goes you know this is all when we're, we work i'm talking when we have the drywall installed you cut out the opening you push that drill bit in and you go on to draw uh, drive a drill bit through the um, through the head plate right now uh, you're going to have to position the drill bit so it is uh, in the middle of the. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. You're going to have to position the drill bit so it's in the middle of that as much as possible. Because if you have it right in the corner where the uh, where the drywall uh, touches the timber or the stud, it's going to come through the through the wall. It's not going to go. So here is the uh, the screw top. All right, so once you uh, once you basically wiggle yourself in there and just make sure that the screw top hits the, the and, you're going, and you're going to feel it because you move it one way okay here's the drywall move it the other way here's the drywall so somewhere in between then they just push it in so the screw top just bites into the wood a little bit and then you push it and you drive it uh, you know, drive the drill bit and the guide helps you with that because it gives you extra leverage those are you know not expensive uh, things but they're all over the place not in not only spe specialty stores you can you can have that so when whenever and, and again uh, go to uh, any of the hardware stores usually it will be electrical section and you can see those uh, flexible bits it also has a little opening here a little hole if you notice so that's after you drill through you can tie a little string to it so you can pull it back and uh, you can pull a string so you can attach the wire to the string later and it also has same hole like that on the other side of the rod on the, at the on the other end right? so you can pull it one way or the other you can't put a string and drill with it but after you drill with uh, you can you can um, you can put one way or the other right so this would be the using the guide that is the flexible bit and sometimes they're six feet uh six feet long you know ten feet long and uh, you know so uh so they're very very useful thing they're not the cheapest drill bits but you just buy one and you carry on for a long time right? <clears throat> and they are different of course different sizes now important thing when dealing with the exterior walls we need to consider some extremely important thing which is called a vapor barrier okay. vapor barrier protects the outside or the, protects the inside from the outside right that will be on the interior walls the vapor barrier so what do we have here's an outside wall or exterior wall so on this side of this wall we're looking at this wall here this is the outside and on this side is the inside of the building so there will be like the siding or whatnot uh, so here's some insu here's some in insulation, and this will be a plastic sheeting, all right? Uh, plastic sheets uh, that uh, that cover the wall that give that give a little bit extra protection. Now it is designed in a way that it it seals the 
inside from the outside but it doesn't seal a completely 100% it makes it's just a, it has a little bit of permeability okay now you have studied the word permeability when it comes to magnetism and it would be the um, uh, the quantity that describes how easy the magnetic field can pass through a material different materials have different permeability also the permeability is used in the construction here and it has something to do with how easy or how hard this material or whatever the combination of materials uh, can pass liquids or gases and gas we're talking about air right? or uh, you know liquids and gases combined so it would be a uh, condensation if you disturb if, if if you disturb this vapor barrier you can run into a lot of problem uh, problems because uh, there could be some condensation happening here in this space and the condensation is going to cause something that's called a black mold now this is a typical installation when you see uh, construction uh, when you see that uh, I'm pretty sure one time or the other you would see something like that there would be a there will be exterior wall right and there will be some insulation packed in between the studs and then it would be covered with the plastic sheets right and then you see those that red tape tack tape uh i think it's a t-u-c-k uh tack tape so that if you have any opening it has to be sealed right so any devices so here's the electrical boxes uh well device boxes so it'd be electrical or maybe you're going to have some uh, boxes that have to do with the data or or, or or thermostat or whatnot usually you would not put a thermostat on the exterior wall but there could be something else uh, that uh, maybe a keypad or there could be all kinds of different devices uh, so whenever you disturb this vapor barrier it has to be intact see everything that is that could be disturbed see it's sealed here uh with some goo all right and it's sealed here with the tape everything is sealed nice and proper all right what do we use for the what do we use for the devices we use something that's called poly pants all right and you can buy them in any hardware store and whenever you install a device box you install that and you install device box inside that poly pan right? and then you seal it and then you seal the cables from the top as well with the tape so this way whenever you disturb the vapor by ear you are resealing that and that goes only for the exterior walls it is not necessary to install that um, for the uh, for the interior walls right the walls inside the building that separate uh, one room from another uh, okay, so it is imp it is extremely important when when you're is doing the new installations, you're going to have to install those, or uh, sometimes when it's a retrofit or uh, or adding adding on a, a, a device box or something, this is the way you have to do it, because if you just drill a hole through the vapor barrier and just uh, you're asking for trouble. What kind of trouble are we asking? You're asking, you're asking for this kind of trouble. If you don't do it properly, you're going to cause this to happen. And this is a black mold. I have written a little bit, not too much, because I'm not a doctor. Um, um, however, I don't need to be a doctor to tell you that black mold is dangerous. It is very hazardous for your health. Um, one thing, I'm going, one piece of advice I'm going to give you right now is that if you ever walk into a building um, and you see something like this, there's only one possible thing you can do. Just turn around and get out of there. Because if you see that, you're breathing that in. It's a type of mushroom that once you inhale that, and guarantee you, it is going to be in the air. Um, you're going to inhale that, and it's going to stay in you, and it's going to cause you a lot of health problems. Okay. Um, so this would be a sign of a black mold. And when you rip the drywall out, this is a huge sign of black mold. It's a telltale. It's a dead giveaway that it's a black mold. And uh, that's as much, you know, I'm not going to read that. You can read this here. Um, and you can also read this here. Um, 
it's just some more detailed description. The function of the vapor barrier is, is, is uh, to, uh, to retard the migration of vapor. So it says it's retard, means slow it down a little bit. It's not completely, um, not completely block it, because if you completely block it, then you're also causing some sort of a problem that can also cause black mold. Uh, the wall is supposed to be able to breathe, and the wall permeability is being used here. So in our case, as opposed to the magnetism, uh, it is the state or quality of a material or a membrane that causes it to allow liquids or gases to pass through. So the permeability in our case talks with being able to pass. Now we, we want to be able to pass just enough so it's considered that, that the wall is breathing, not that the uh, uh, you know there's a there, there's a there's a wind going through it, all right. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is uh, we're going we're going to stop. Uh, next thing we're going to go into the cable installation stages. Um, uh, I don't want to rush through it. So next time we we'll see each other, we'll go through that. Uh, so we have talked about the, um, the possible situations that you might have you might encounter when uh, when running the wires through, and then we're going to look at some uh, some structured ways of addressing a job that needs to be done and do it in some sort of a structured way so uh, when you're doing it in, in, a, in a large scale or commercial scale if it's a real one wire or two wires that you have to you know connect your playstation at home uh, then you don't need much structure you can just struggle through it and whatever amount of time is going to take you that's fine but if you're dealing with it for work and if you're dealing on a, on a regular basis, then you have to have some sort of structure way of, of, uh, of approaching the installations. And that's what we're going to talk about next time we see each other. Okay, so that's it for today. And uh, I will see you when I see you. Thank you, guys.